Hey, True Believers England team here with another episode of Comic Book Origins where we look at the first comic book appearance of any superhero, villain, or team. And this time around, we're looking at the human fly based on a stuntman named Rick Rojak. I kid you not. This is the wildest superhero ever because he's real. And he was, as you're seeing right here. These are videos of this stuntman. I think he only really had two stunts. One was he attached himself to the top of a jet, and the other one was a uh, ill-fated motorcycle crash. But, hey, you know what? He made a name for himself, and I guess the powers that be at Marvel said, you know what? We need to make a comic book about this guy. He's a nut bar. I think kids will go for it. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so anyway, the superhero version of the human fly had 60% of his uh, skeletal structure replaced by steel. I have a feeling that the human version wasn't that far behind, in all honesty. Um, but there you go, gang. That's the human fly we're going to check out. You know this character because you've at least seen him. You've seen these books in the dollar bin. I've been very curious. I don't think I've ever read this comic, to tell you the truth. Not even in the 1970s. So I'm, I'm really, really kind of jazzed to see what this crap is all about. Um, it's always in the quarter bin or the dollar bin, the $2 bin or something like that. Except for issue number one. Right now people are going crazy for issue number one. I, I've noticed prices rising. And I can only assume it's because they think he's going to be in a Marvel movie. I think it's kind of ridiculous. But hey, that's me. I'm a different breed of cat. And with all that said, let's kick back, relax, and get this party started. Honestly, I think the cover kind of works. It's very dynamic. The human fly, while it, the costume looks stupid on the real person, this actually doesn't look too bad. And we do see him doing all sorts of weird stunts, including his jet stunt. Not the motorcycle stunt, by the way, but he's fighting a shark. He's hanging from a helicopter, tightrope walking between a crevasse, I guess, and uh, riding an airplane. Awesome. I think it explains everything that the human fly is. Let's get this baby going. And cool thing is we get ourselves a good old-fashioned splash page that says, Death Walk! The world is wind. The, the world is wind. Screaming past at 300 miles an hour, threatening to tear his human fragile form from the suspended stump bar that has lowered him from the speeding jet copter above to the huge 747 below. And we see the human fly hanging upside down. It looks like he's got some sort of magnets on his hands. And he's saying, magnet clamps and gloves will adhere me to my target if I'm not blown away before I can reach it. Which, in all honesty, would exactly happen if you look at how they're flying and everything. And it says, the world is wind and he is the human fly. And wait till you see who is amazing. It's Spider-Man. It's always Spider-Man in Marvel Comics. And then we meet his crew, one who's holding on to the safety bar, the other one's the pilot, both of them worried that he's going to die if they don't do their job properly. So we kind of get a, a sense of the loyalty that they have towards him. And we get a little brief backstory of why they're there. And we have this news reporter saying, hey, you're a glory seeker. And he's like, well, you know, if, if he wanted glory, why would he hide his face? And his uh, friends are like, ah, don't. She, she's already written her story. And then Donald Trump runs up. Oh, my gosh, somebody stole that plane. And I guess that's what leads us to what they're doing right now. They say the plane was taken over by a group, I kid you not, calling themselves the News Hounds. And they're yelling at a whole bunch of news reporters, including Peter Parker, saying, and if you want to live to see your bylines on this story, you'll do as you're told. And Peter asks, what is it you want? Five million cash and safe conduct to Mexico. Why, why even tell them? It's not like Peter's going to go, okay, let me get that for you. But the other guy says, or we circle over Houston until the fuel runs out, then we let her drop. And I think they'll pay up, kid. Don't. And we see the human fly rushing into action saying he's going to take the jet copter. And the news reporter looks at him and says, but can anyone, especially a publicity-seeking glory hunter like human fly, save that plane and the thousands of lives that will be lost if it crashes in time? 
So it seems like they're trying to create the whole Daily Planet Spider-Man thing going on with this reporter. And there's always got to be some sort of melodrama in a Marvel comic, especially in the 60s and 70s. It's cheesy. It's fun. It's what we made, what made us love comics. So we cut to, I guess, modern time, the, the present. And we see the fly makes it to the plane, but the support bar starts shaking and he's like blaze you got to keep up with the airplane she's like oh my gosh there's a storm and says lord if the lightning should hit the stunt bar and we see the human fly kind of uh twist and he's saying rain buffeting me bar twisting i'm losing my grip on the jet and because everybody gets a backstory <laughs> kid you not and as the copter jet begins to fall behind in the face of the savage storm Mag clamp slipping if I don't let go of the bar, the human fly says. I'll be pulled back along the length of the jet. Blaze has to increase speed. She must. And we see Blaze flying the plane. I'm giving it all I've got, Ted, but I can't do it. Yes, you can, lady. For the fly, Ted says. His words hit Blaze Kindle like a shot. And then we get the flashback. And we see her starting her job her first time as a co-pilot. And her pilot is like, I don't feel good about women drivers. And then he has a heart attack, which makes her have to take over the plane. And like every other woman driver, she crashes. And then they mummify her. I kid you not. Look at this. I'm afraid if your body is really wrapped up that tight, you ain't talking, woman. But the fly comes in, sees her broken body and goes, hey, you crashed. I crashed. I want to hire you now. And remembering how she began, she ends up straighten, straightening out the plane or the helicopter and the human flies like, Blaze did it. Speeds are matched and both mag clamps are secured. Now if only Ted can stabilize the bar. And Ted's like, dude, I have to remember how I came to be with you in order to stabilize this bar. And we learn he's a Vietnam vet who lost both of his hands when he tried to stop a mother and her child from going onto a bridge he was about to blow up. He's offered a job by Tony Stark. He's like, Tony Stark, not him, not that rich guy. Uh-uh, I'm going to go work with that weirdo dressed as a human fly that likes to do stunts and stuff. That sounds like, like way better than me because he's got something in his hands that gives him like a steel grip. And, like, Tony Stark would only, you know, be able to give me armor and a uh, whole new life with a lot of money and maybe my own suit of armor and uh, I, I, I could go on adventures with him. But, no, I don't want that. I want the stunt guy. But the job is done and the human fly continues to make his walk across the plane. And he's even given himself a little pep talk in his mind. Good, boot clamps are holding. My steel reinforced bone structure is helping me to withstand the wind. And my baton is keeping me balanced. If I can make it to the forward hatch, the mercenary will find he's got an unexpected passenger. The human fly. But for some reason, they can actually hear the clunking inside the plane. And they're like, what in? Sounded like something's moving on the outside of the hull. And the other terrorists are like, you kidding, boss? Even at these lower speeds, what could it be? And Spider-Man's senses are going off. Impossible, as it seems. He's not kidding. There is someone up there. Or my name's not Peter Parker. And then we see the terrorists do the brilliant thing, which is fire bullets through the airplane hull above trying to shoot the human fly. And so the bullets cause a big old explosion because... That's how that works, knocking the fly off of his feet and says, I'm being swept from the jet. His friends see him fly by, but they're too far away to help. And we also see that the news reporter and the human fly's agent are worried with, I don't, that's not the human fly's agent. Didn't he look more like Donald Trump than Art Garfunkel? But he's saying, Lord is the fly's agent. I knew someday this might happen. But to actually see it and not be able to do anything in the news reporter is saying, you're witnessing this live from West TV viewers. The fly has been blown off the hijack 747. The city now has no choice but to meet the mercenaries' demands. But that is only the view to those on the ground. We see the fly as he switches his powers to the turbo jets and flies back up to the airplane, grabbing onto a wing saying, whoop, everything's exhausted. Now I'm only holding on for dear life. And then he remembers how he got into the stunt game. Life, there was a time when that word was synonymous with death. 
Like the night his car was run off the road in North Carolina hours or days later, why are they mummifying everybody? We have a doctor looking at him going, you're in hospital in critical condition. We may be able to save your life, but you will be a cripple for the rest of your days. Not the greatest of bedside manner. He screamed to himself since his broken lips, his lips were broken? Could no longer form words. The doctor sedated him, put the restraining straps on him, and only then did he cease to struggle. For he knew they were wrong. I will move again. If the mind is whole, then the body can be made to respond, and someone could kill a bird. And we see the human fly get out of his hospital bed and go through his exercise regiment that will put his body at peak perfection. And as the fly is leaving, still wrapped up like the frickin' unknown soldier, he says, Vets, workers must hurt more than me, all given up without hope. There's gotta be some way of giving them courage to show them that if I could triumph over my disability, so they can they over there. So I'll become a stuntman and show them what their bodies no longer can do. And then we see that whoever was writing this, I forgot to look at to see who was writing this, by the way. But they have no idea how an airplane works because the human fly lands on the wing of the plane, still holding on to the wing, by the way, at four or 500 mile an hour winds. Somebody who's been in a hurricane knows that's full of crap. And he blows the door off the hinges, of course, causing no kind of uh, pressure cabin loss or anything like that. But the fly makes it inside the plane and basically takes care of all the bad guys pretty easy. They don't fire off a shot. One of them fires into the floor, the other one off to the side. Once again, not a good idea, but then again, with the door blowing open at this point, maybe the pressure had uh, stabilized. Not a big plane guy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about this one, but the fly easily takes out the bad guys. And we see that Peter Parker is putting on his Spider-Man outfit, ready to jump into battle. Spider-Man jumps out of whatever corner he was in that we're supposed to believe nobody could see him changing in. And he starts fighting the terrorists with a human fly, but one puts on a jetpack to get away. The fly jumps and grabs onto his legs, being pulled out of the airplane. Spider-Man leaps after him, forming a parachute out of his spider webs, and the bad guy tries to shoot the human fly at the same time he activates the jetpack, knocking the fly off of him. Spider-Man shoots a web out to catch the fly, and Spider-Man lowers them both to safety. He's like, hey, we, we did it, and here's your copter. The mercenary is still KO'd. Take it from here, pal. It's all yours. And Fly's like, what do you mean? And then Spider bounces because he's got to make his way back in the jet so he could be Peter Parker again and report on the news story that those two just saved the jet. Or just the fly since nobody mentions that Spider-Man was there. And we see, I guess that's the airline or something. He's like, for our entire city fly, I can only say thank you. And the fly says, please give the reward money to charity, sir. The airline has covered our expenses. We ask for nothing more. Ted, Blaze, Arnie, we've done a good day's work. Let's go get some rest. And we see a news reporter, the one going, He's too good. I'm going to find out who he is. Expose him if it's the last thing I do. And there you go, gang. That is the first appearance of the human fly in comic book form. And that's the first appearance. Okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, that was bad. <laughs> That was really bad. Um, I didn't care for that whatsoever. I thought it was kind of silly. It was stupid. Um, just not in a fun way either. I mean, it, I guess some people liked it. Made it to 19 issues. Um, who wrote this thing? I I don't see. I'm trying to find the writer on this. Well, here it is. Bill Monolo. Oh, he does so much better work. Lee Elias was the art. It wasn't horrible as far as art was concerned. It's just... You could really tell they didn't give a crap about the story and everything. It was so tropish, <laughs> in all honesty. I don't know. I've, I've read better for this, but there you go. This was commissioned, by the way. I am so far behind, but I'm going to catch up on them. And this one was commissioned uh, for me to do. And I, I, I love that it was because I've never read this book before. I have the lights out to put them to sleep at the last bit there. Um but Twids is going off here now. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for whoever commissioned me to do the comic book origin of the fly. It was actually kind of fun. I love doing these things. 
And uh, let me know what you guys would like to see. I do have a few more of these and as well as some uh, really that goods and really that bads, which I'm going to cover. I'm looking forward to doing Give Me Liberty as far as that. Let's see. Zorro, Captain Underpants is, uh, is another comic book first appearance I've got to do. So there's a lot more. So check that out. and Check out First Appearance Fridays as well. I think you'll have a great time with that over in I Love Comics, which we might bring over here. Anyway, once again, thank you very, very much uh, for the commission. And if you would like to help out the channel again, just go on over to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the till, helps keep the lights on, helps keep making videos for you. If you do like this video, consider uh, turning on the video that's popping up here. It's another comic book origins. I think you're having going to have a great time with it. Once again, thank you very much for hanging out. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching.